There's a crowd gathering outside. They're calling for you. Lest we should ever forget, there is violence in the streets this Remembrance Day. Throughout Australia, those who had waited 20 years for a Labour government march in protest. In cities and towns, police leave is cancelled, workers down tools, Liberal Party offices are stoned, and fights erupt in city streets. For a moment, it seems, the very fabric of Australian society may unravel. So begins the federal election campaign of 1975. The campaign in which Gough Whitlam makes no new promises, gives no new undertakings. He speaks simply of a crisis in democracy, of a great wrong that must be righted. Men and women of Australia. The whole future of Australian democracy is in your hands. Malcolm Fraser hammers inflation and unemployment. Taking as his theme the three dark years, he calls on Australia to turn on the lights. Day by day, the shadow cast by the dismissal fades. The economy emerges as the only issue. In the election held on December the 13th, Malcolm Fraser wins the biggest majority in Australian political history. And that was the way of it. In Australia, in the spring of 1975, some things lost, some things found. But the years slipped by. John Malcolm Fraser, Frazier, Noreen Victoria, remained Prime Minister until his defeat at the election of March the 5th, 1983. He resigned the Liberal leadership late that night. Edward Gough Whitlam was once again rejected at the federal election held on December the 10th, 1977. Within months, he resigned from both the Labour leadership and the Parliament. He is now elder statesman of his party, academic, advocate of the Australian Republic. The leadership passed to Bill Hayden, who in 1980 came within 2% of the Prime Ministership. Three years later, he himself resigned as opposition leader. On January the 1st, 1978, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, on the recommendation of Malcolm Fraser, created Billy Mackey Snedden Knight Bachelor. For seven years, he was the Speaker of the House of Representatives, a position he discharged with great distinction. In October 1977, Dr. James Ford Cairns did not seek re-election. A thoughtful man, approaching his 70th year, he strives to raise our consciousness. Accompanied by Junie Morosi, he explores alternative lifestyles. For some men, life itself is fed by nothing more than dreams. Midway through 1977, after almost 30 years as a politician, Rex Connor announced he would resign from Parliament. He died several weeks later. 
They buried him late in the afternoon in a simple grave not far from Wollongong collieries. His dream of Australian resources owned by Australians remains just that, a dream. In New York in the winter of 1980, Hirath Hasaram Kemlani was arrested and charged with trafficking in stolen securities. Although he was sentenced to three years in a federal penitentiary, he was immediately released on parole. Present whereabouts unknown. John Robert Kerr, Governor General of Australia, retired from vice regal office in December 1977. The man who wrote often of his love for Australia lives in self-imposed exile in Surrey, England. The Australian Constitution, which allowed the events of Remembrance Day 1975 to occur, remains unchanged. A precedent now exists for a man elected by no one to dismiss a government elected by the Australian people. And so it goes. The tide of events bears us on, ceaselessly into the future. But as all men learn, it's those who forget the past that are bound to relive it. <laughs>